At this point, I would like to introduce this year's valedictorian, Idrunil Kosmokar. Idrunil came to UC Berkeley in the fall of 2011 after graduating from high school in Pune, India, and, and representing India in the 2011 International Mathematical Olympiad. He is graduating this semester with a major in pure mathematics, having received an A-plus grade in 75% of his math courses, including honors versions of multivariable calculus, real analysis, linear algebra, and abstract algebra. He also received A-plus grade, grades in four graduate courses, including a graduate course in algebra, Math 250A, a graduate course in differential equations, Math 204, and both semesters of our graduate topology and analysis sequence, Math 202 A and B. In addition to his mathematics courses, he took courses in subjects such as economics and computational cognitive science. He also published a novel at the age of 15. During his time at Berkeley, Indra Neal participated in mathematical competitions as well as in in research and teaching. He received honorable mention honors and was the top UC Berkeley finisher in the 2012 and 2013 William Lowell Putnam Mathematical Competitions and was a member of the Berkeley team which earned honorable mention honors in the 2013 competition. In the summer prior to his junior year, he worked with Professor Olga Holtz and her research group, leading to a published paper in a research journal. Professor Holtz writes, that Indra Neal is driven by a love of discovery, not recognition. That he's inventive, open-minded, and a natural collaborator. This past summer, he participated in a summer research program on ergodic theory at Williams College, where he co-authored a paper on, on the topic of the ergodicity of products. Indra Neal has taught Berkeley students as an undergraduate student instructor for both Math 32 and Math 10b. He also participated in the CalTeach program through which he taught mathematics to fifth graders at a middle school in Oakland. Indra Neal is especially devoted to teaching and it shows. Here are some quotations from his student evaluations. Quote, he is the nicest person and an amazing teacher. He clarified all the confusing topics and his work saved my life. All around the best, I loved him. Quote, Neal is by far the best GSI I ever had. He is very organized and very clear in his explanations. He makes all topics so much more sense, makes so much more sense He's also very approachable. Quote, preparation was good, very great at explaining, kind, approachable. He's been the best GSI I've had so far. Quote, Neil has it all. I can't really think of anything that could have made his teaching any better. Neil is amazing and a great instructor, and I know he will do great things. This fall, Indra Neil will begin his PhD program in computational and mathematical engineering at Stanford University. Indra Neil, podium is yours. Thank you for the warm introduction. Um, I took a lot of classes here at Berkeley. Uh, public speaking wasn't one of them, so you'll have to bear with me. I would like to begin by congratulating all of us students on our success. We all know that math at Cal is hard. On behalf of everyone, I would like to thank all the professors for their teaching and support, and all the staff members for helping us at every step of the way. On a personal note, I would like to thank Professor Olga Holtz and Professor Bern Sturmfels for their guidance throughout my four years here. And above all, I would like to thank my family for their unconditional support. Dear students, we are all math majors here, so we love math, we enjoy it, we think it's beautiful. So I'm going to skip all the cliche stuff. Instead, I want to share some thoughts with you. Uh, and I guess for the next five minutes, you have no choice but to listen to me. <laughs> for the past four years, we all worked very hard to understand math. We did all the problem sets for Math 110 and wrote all the proofs for Math 104, and here we are, we are successful. It almost makes us forget our struggles when we had just started, when we used to stare at one sentence in one proof for hours to figure out what the heck was going on. I saw these struggles again as a teaching assistant for Math 10b. My students were not math majors, but they really wanted to learn math. 
One day they asked me why some combinatorial identity was true. And uh, being a stereotypical math major, I gave them a rigorous mathematical proof, one that Walter Rudin would be proud of. But they didn't understand. To them, a proof was just a bunch of random words. They didn't know how to read it. They didn't know why I was writing all of that. They just stared at the blackboard. If my objective was to help students understand, my proof had failed. We spent four years learning a language, learning how to translate a proof on paper to an understanding in the mind. This is a form of training that most non-math majors never receive. I see my students struggling to explain a mathematical argument, maybe because they lack the vocabulary or maybe they're not good at algebra. But when they talk, I really feel that they understand something about the underlying concept. So I'm forced to ask, is math really hard or is it just the language that we use to describe it which is hard? If 10% of students fail, maybe we can get away with blaming the students. But when a whole nation struggles to improve math and science standards in high schools, maybe we need to reassess the way we teach math. It's not just about teaching better. I think we need to go deeper and ask what it really means to learn math. We all did the math major at Cal, you know, uh, math, applied math, math with teaching concentration. Uh, we learned all this under the instruction of the best professors in the world. What did we learn here? I think we developed an understanding of math that transcends every theorem we read and every problem we solved. This understanding is deeper than the notation we use. It is much more than being able to write proofs. It goes beyond the algorithms we use and the computations we do. But the only way we can share this understanding with someone else is by using the symbols and notation of a language that originated long, long ago. Which brings us to my questions. Why do we represent math the way we do? Why do we write equations as horizontal lines of symbols? Why is expressing them as paintings or stories considered informal? Why do we think that being able to understand something is the same as being able to prove something? Yes, proofs and symbolic equations are perhaps ideal for research, but are they intuitive enough for the broader society? Perhaps we could design a new language for math, one that would be in tune with the bright imagination of children, which would make arithmetic as natural as throwing a baseball and which would make talking in math as easy as talking in English. I guess my question is, why do we accept today's language as the only way to share math? Is there something better? Many of you may be wondering what this has to do with you, especially if you're going to run away from academia and teaching. But today marks our entry into a global mathematical community. We are now going to get a piece of paper which says that we know something about math. And so our colleagues, friends, siblings, people are going to look at us as representatives of this mathematical community. And when they ask us questions about math, we have to decide on the best way to explain things because the way we talk math, the way we do math, the way we express math, it influences what society thinks about math. So I'm going to stop here now. Congratulations, class of 2015, and good luck to you all. <laughs>